Hello and welcome to Filmy Ladies. We are taking on another superstar in our Superstar Women of the Past series. And today is, you can't guess because neither of us did the haircut, it's Sadhana. Yay! <laughs> I love her. I am sorry that I've already made the haircut reference because she deserves to be remembered for much more than that. But I do have to say that was the first thing I ever learned about her when I began watching older Hindi films and it is striking and it does suit her and it is super stylish and we're not going to pretend that that's not true, but I, let's talk about her as a performer. Um, we both watched some things, some things that star <laughs> some men. Unfortunately, we are out of the Dev Anand necessity period, although obviously he's part of this story too, but we'll, we'll yes. get on to her. Dev Anand is always there. He's always, he's he's always omniscient, there. omnipresent. Yeah. He'll be but, there until um, the 2000s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I was telling Beth that um, I had a very like busy day full of adulting and being a responsible person. And my day actually began with watching a Manoj Kumar movie. Um, so that is how you know you were adulting. Mm. Um, but the Sadhana movies that I saw for this episode were uh, Mira Saya, which was a rewatch because I've seen it many, many times. And I love that film. And um, Wokanti, which I vaguely remember having seen a long time ago but I couldn't remember anything except for the songs so mm. that was the Sadhna Manoj Kumar movie I saw this morning and of course my I think my favorite Sadhna movie of all time would probably be Hamdono I mean Wakt as well but I don't think of Wakt as a Sadhna movie because no. just because it just has such a gigantic star cast yeah. it belonged to one person yeah. but yeah what are the Sadhna movies you saw I watched uh, first, Intercom, which I had not seen, and also Anita, which I had not seen, and which is oh. the third of her, you know, kind of suspense movies with the Raj Kosla trilogy. And I saw two so, of those because the, so the Raj Kosla thriller trilogy is Vokanti, followed by Mirasaya, followed by Anita. So good. <laughs> and I wanted to watch Mirasaya, but I cannot find it with subtitles anywhere. So if anyone does find it, uh, even I forgot to look for a DVD and I didn't have time to get one, but I would I would buy a DVD of this because I like the other two. So I would watch yeah. that. Um, before we dig into her films, I was trying to think through again, like what is this person's unique selling point or unique? What does she specifically or uniquely bring? And I really don't know. Um, yeah. And maybe she's just and this makes it sound small. It's not small. Maybe she's the best of a certain kind of thing that several people were doing. Maybe she was the easiest to work with. Maybe right. she was the cheapest. I have no idea. Yeah. But I really, I can't say that I think she is an exceptionally fine actor the way we talked about um, Nargis. Wahida, Nargis. Wahida. Um, and um, <laughs> why am I blanking on names? <laughs> Oh, oh with Janti Mala with her feeling yeah, performance. Yeah, just yeah. any of the other people that we've covered, I think kind of are heavier hitters in the acting department. Newton, yeah. Newton is who I was trying to think yes. of. She's no Newton. But I yeah. do find her um sort of straightforwardly good, um, pleasing to watch. I've seen her in several different kinds of things, as have you, because I've seen quite a few right. of her films without even realizing I did it. She also directed a film, which we can talk about too, a, you know, kind right. of madcap masala thing, which is different than what she starred in. Um, so I think maybe there's something really people maybe smarter than we are or more knowledgeable about her than we are could say, but maybe there's something quite well-rounded about her that made her um, really good to work with and audiences responded to. Yeah, it was interesting because like when we decided to do the Superstar series, obviously we were going to go in chronological order and Sadhna, actually, if we were going to do a Sadhna episode, we should have done it before Sharmila Tagore because that's where oh, she comes true. in, like she proceeds, but we've already done like Sharmila Jay and Rekha because I think at one point in the Google Doc, we were like, okay, we're not going to do Meena Kumari, we're not going to do Hema Malini, we're not going to do Sadhna. And then we saw Vakht. And then we were like, hang on a second. I kind of like her and you kind of like her. And I don't know what the big deal is, but she's like, she was a superstar. And like, what is, let's do an episode on Sadhna. So that's why it's out of order. Yeah. But you're right. For me also, it's not like I would say that I dislike Sadhna. I don't. I think she's lovely mm -hmm. and she's done some really good performances. Mm -hmm. She's held her own. And what is, I don't know about Anita, but at least in Wokanti and Mira Saya, she is first build. So yes, also Sadhna. In 
in okay, India. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. So it's like Sadna, and then it says Sunil Dutt or Manoj Kumar or whatever. So they were her films. And yeah. indeed, like neither Manoj Kumar nor Sunil Dutt matter in those films. <laughs> they could have been played by anyone, you know. Um, but Dear Manoj time, Kumar, you don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> So I actually took a screen cap of Manoj Kumar in the rain, looking at Sadna and just like glaring at her. And I was like, I'm oddly attracted to him. What is wrong with me? And then I sent the picture to Beth and I was like, I'm oddly attracted to Manoj Kumar. What is happening? Perhaps it is the heat. (laughs) And Beth was like, confusion. (laughs) No, but um, to your point, I am not exactly sure what it is about Sadhna either. Um, I don't think she has a very specific personality and a very specific point of view in the way that these other actresses did. Like you associate Nargis with certain performances, you associate Newton with certain, Meena Kumari with certain performances. With Sadhna, it, it, she kind of defies, like, I don't know how to describe her beyond she's, extremely pretty and she was supposedly the very first fashion icon Mm -hmm. um like no one before her was a fashion icon in the way that she was because no one was associated with a certain look um along with designer Bhanu Ithaya Sadhna was the one who wanted to wear um salwar kameezes super super tight Mm. like really tight chudidars and she was skinny 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 like Saira Banu and so she is the one who came up with those along with Bhanu Thaya and apparently during the shooting of Vak Yash Chopra was like uh these silver kameezas are not it and Sadhna was like no this is it will look good I be promise you and he's like (laughs) he was like okay so apparently she was like known as a fashion icon and she's she's very pretty but She's not the best dancer. She's also not the best actor. So I think it's just that she's a very well-rounded actor where she can play someone who is rich, like a rich lady of the manor, like in Mirasaya. But then she can also play like, you know, a girl who ran away with the the decoys, also Mirasaya um, and all sorts of things. And she's kind of believable, but she doesn't necessarily have a unique selling proposition. Um, but she's done some really great performances. So it is a little bit of a riddle to me also. I think the other thing about Sadhna is that she looks really good with all the heroes. Like her chemistry with Sunil Dutt in Merasaya is fire. Like they look so good together. I just had a smile on my face the entire time. And at one point, I remember I posted a picture of Sunil Dutt crying. He cries so beautifully, that man. And I wrote in my Instagram story, I said, emo Sunil Dutt is my favorite Sunil Dutt. And Sujoy replied to me and he goes, actually, Daku Sunil Dutt is my favorite. Oh, and I was yeah. like, yes. And I said, but also romance Sunil that I like very much. And then I was like, but I also like comic Sunil that. So she and Sunil that look really cute together. But then she and Devanand and Hamdona are yeah. also fire. So yeah. good together. Yeah. Devanand, here he is. And then she and Manoj Kumar. I was shocked. I actually liked Manoj Kumar and Vokanti. So yeah. I'm going to blame it on the heat wave that we are <laughs> experiencing. Is the triple digits well, in California. These movies of Raj Kosla, these thrillers kind of require a bit of some extra suspension of disbelief. So maybe that's what's going on. <laughs> yes. If you can believe Supernatural, you can find Manoj Kumar. <laughs> <laughs> Who is her co-star in Anita, by the way? Because I haven't seen that movie. Manoj Kumar. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> How is he in that film? <laughs> I, when you were saying they didn't really matter, the heroes didn't really matter, I would agree. I think that, so the Anita, I would say, is a very story-driven film. And while I very much enjoyed Sadhana in it, I don't think it had to be her. I think it probably could have been right. most people. Um, although maybe there is something to playing a mysterious and or ghosty and or who is this really kind of figure mm. that that um, being a sort of less dominant personality actually lends itself to in a way don't 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 diagram that sentence I just said but you know what I mean so maybe that's part of it um but I but so I think that you could have kind of interchanged them with anyone and it would have you could have interchanged anyone in that film with basically anyone I would say but I thought he was totally fine he's not the point he is actually in it more than she is I think because she dies Hmm. oh Um, okay does she Eh, um and I don't want to I don't want to spoiler it, but um, so, you know, she, he, she is off screen for quite a chunk while he's trying to figure out what happened to her. Um, okay. But it, again, it's not really about him. It's about 
yeah, it's about story and about the concept of what do you know and who is a person and all these kinds of things. So he was, yeah. he was fine. He did minimal amounts of this, but he did do it instantly. Like the film opens with really his, his entry in the film is he's in a tree outside her window at night. So he's got like shady leaf shadows and all over him. So he's got like, like he can't not do it. And, you know, my first exposure really to Manoj Kumar was through Om Shanti Om when they make fun of, fun of him and he's a jerk about it in real life. And I was like, buddy, yeah. take a joke. You did do right. that all the time and you know that you did it. There's even yeah. an emoji we can use to represent you, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> so I think his Manoj humorlessness Kumar, is really annoying to me. Yeah, <laughs> but I think Manoj Kumar and Devanand are probably the most like quote unquote affected actors yes. in Bollywood where yes. they're almost like caricatures of themselves yes. but they but they didn't start out like that I do think Manoj Kumar in the black and white films was okay and then it's better yeah and then it just kept getting worse and Devanand actually in the black and white films oh. is darling he's great he's so great in Hamdono in films like that and then by the time you get to the 70s and he's in you know he's way past his prime and he's trying to be like a Casanova and you're like oh my god can you please retire like please go away <laughs> And as mannered as he is and everything, I still, I still, I enjoy him, but also roll my eyes at him at the same time. Yeah. And a lot of those he makes me because, giggle and he still clearly cares about making movies and is trying things and all that stuff. So like, I appreciate that, but yeah, he's got like <laughs> kind of weird uncle that you put up with and he's sometimes enjoyable to him or whatever, but, and I really, I really cannot fault him or the cons or anybody else. Like just because you're aging doesn't mean you don't want to do this thing that you yeah. loved doing. So I just wish they'd do it in a slightly more thoughtful <laughs> way, some of them, but- we'll, Or be a little self-aware. Be more self-aware, exactly. So maybe we'll have to do a Superstars Men series and obviously we'll have to talk about Devanand for like three episodes. <laughs> but yeah, no, Manoj Kumar is not my favorite, but if I have to have him, this would be the preferred era for sure. And there's nothing particularly patriotic going on in this. No. In this film. Her her hero in Intercom is Oh yes. Sanjay Khan. Boo. How, how is he even the brother of Feroz? Like why I would got, disown him. Well, yeah, like and we'll, we'll put even aside like his ickiness as a human being, but like he's just a nothing on screen. So, but he's also barely in that either. So that Good. one is much more her film, I would say. Good. So. Oh, nice. So in the com has that, I haven't seen it, but it has that really amazing party song that Amrita was talking about in the yes. party songs episode, right? Yes. With the crazy hair and the yes. red sari and the drunken And wantonness. Helen is there as her yeah. friend. Helen is her conspirator in this film. Helen which is, is also great. in Vokanti, which is I, lovely. That's right. But she, she's killed off. Oh. She's Manoj Kumar's lover, which is so hard to buy because you know Sorry, Helen, Helen would not even look at him. I know. I mean, the but man Helen has lover. been paired with and had to pretend she's attracted to like <laughs> no one. She would win. A, I suspect she would win the award for all time Hindi cinema pretending. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the story of In the Calm? Like, I mean, the title itself sounds very vindictive. Right? It's very yeah. pleasing. So she does. Um, she. Oh God. And the songs in that movie, my gosh. Mm, I love my it. Gosh. So she plays a um, college educated woman who is having trouble finding a job. She takes okay. a job at a department store and there's a big disclaimer at the beginning of the film about how this is a real store, but none of these things really happen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and she is, they want, they hire her a client of the store hits on her and she refuses his advances. Mm -hmm. And it's as it's Sen, I think who does it. It's one of these older kind of uncle character actor guys. She fends him off very nobly, uh, very effectively and all. And then he complains in the store, you know, tries to fire her and they, they, they plant stolen goods on her and she gets fired and put in jail. Well, that's terrible. So then she takes her revenge and her Good. partners in the revenge are Ashok Kumar and Helen. And honestly, there's no better team for shenanigans than Ashok Kumar in his granddad years and Helen. Between I just the want two to be of them, friends they can with do them. anything. Oh my God. I, I 
oh, I had no idea. And I was like, why? I need more films where these two are like in cahoots together with whoever, just the two of them, with Sadna, with anyone. So they go through stuff. And then of course you eventually find out who's related to who and what things are. But part of their plan is she's going to marry Sanjay Khan, who is the son of the department store owner and who is a bit of a wastrel. Uh, wastrel? Okay. Wastrel? However you say it. Waste uh, wastrel? Bad guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and she's pretty great in it and obviously so, lessons are learned and things like that but it is it is I would highly recommend Intercom I totally enjoyed it but I'm very confused about what exactly is the revenge she takes so her father-in-law is Rahman who is also the the shop the store. owner mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so but what is the revenge though well her, the revenge is that they recognize her and like her the son is so basada that he marries her even over the parental objection and and now hmm. she gets to go around saying that she's a thief and she was in jail and destroying their is that oh that's amazing <laughs> i love it when the women are destroying the is that that is great i know <laughs> it's pretty great oh and i should say i forgot to mention the most important part is because of what happens to her at work she is not able to get home and give her ailing mother medicine so her mother oh. Oh my gosh. Well, Rahman has like, a lot to answer for in this Rahman movie, took, clearly. took her mother away and things That's like terrible. that. So, and I'm we very also much team Sadna. That Rahman has done bad things to Ashok Kumar in the past. So there's a bit of a flashback happening and they were like buddies. And then, so I, I highly recommend this film. It's great. And then it's got that fantastic cabaret number that is mm one of the most egregious examples of Bollywood blackface, if not the most egregious, because the man is in a cage as well. But right. Ah, uh, Johnny John, which is just, yeah. I mean, I've heard this song a million times. That it is audio aware, only. That is it, an audio only experience. Yeah. Yeah. But hell, but then this is the thing. Helen is amazing in it. So just like that, that film I watched where Helen was in a, an amazing cabaret number until she gets sexually assaulted yeah. in the number and I'm like, Ugh. but you know, watch it for Helen and her amazing outfits and yeah. but just watch this film. It was really great. But Sadna, I would say, so again, we have someone kind of pretending to be one thing when she's really another, mm. she's been tarred with a brush of yet another thing that she isn't really. And I thought, I thought she was very good. Like I will remember the whole film's effect rather than her specifically, I think mm. in the long run, but I thought she was really good. Maybe some other people uh, like Asha Para could have done this. I think Sharmila right. could have done this, but they, but she was really good. And I definitely bought her as a kind of impoverished, but educated young woman who's trying her best and, you know, says no to these powerful men, mm. which we still know is still hard to do at work right. and other places. And I, I loved that the film was willing to, you know, point, paint her as correct and these men who did her did her dirty in criminal ways and like really destroyed her life they're the baddies and I, I feel like we don't see that so clearly enough um the film's directed by R.K. Nair and uh I fully fully recommend it and if you hate Sanjay Khan which you should he you can ignore him completely he doesn't matter okay at good all. and he's not I generally ignore lot. him anyway um <laughs> Yeah. Also, He's like, also, Sadna and Ashok Kumar, as part of their revenge plan, open an Egyptian themed casino. Duh. Because that is the thing people do. <laughs> and it's interior decor and like the numbers in there and like all that are. So, how does she befriend Ashok Kumar? So, in the beginning of the film, he's escaping from the police and he okay. gives her a package of postcards. Okay. <laughs> that become important because she's just walking along the road and he gives them mm. to her and then, you know, he runs off. And then like a year later, or whatever, he somehow was able to find her and get the postcards back. Um, okay. Yeah. And, and, then, and then they become important. Because. Huh? And Helen is her friend because how? Like is Helen. I a actually don't dancer? remember. I watched this film the other day and I already don't remember how Helen gets involved, okay. but but she does. And she of course is a she works at the at the casino, I believe. But I think there's more ah. to it. I want to say there was more to it than that, but I cannot remember what it is. And Helen's name is Rebecca, which is fascinating. <laughs> I know. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Intercom, you should watch it. I will watch it for sure. So of all the Sadna films that you have seen, which one would you say is your favorite? Because I feel like both of us have seen like a fair bit. Yeah, uh, it's kind of a three-way tie. I would say Humdono is, of course, yes. lovely and the music is great. I really do. I mean, Walked as an entire film 
is superb. I don't remember Woke on Tea very well. I have seen it. Hmm. So as, as you talk about it, that one might rise in my ranks. But I mean, Gita Maranam just speaks to me and my 70s masala-ness. And the fact that not only is she in it, she made it. Right. Like, also, fun fact, her name in Mirasaya is Gita. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe so, that's why she called it Gita Maranam, because I think Mirasaya was one of her biggest like yeah, blockbusters in her career. So, so maybe I she was like so. attached to the name. And I kind of, I really appreciate that she was this, I think we would probably all agree, a very 60s heroine. Yes. And as the 70s are rolling on, you know, when you're getting older, maybe you're like, I don't, uh, how to stay relevant. I want it. Or, or maybe just like, I'd love to try this. It looks fun. <laughs> right. Yeah. One of the things I love about 70s masala is there's very often this sense of, yeah. <laughs> so maybe she wanted in on that. And she brought in Sunil Dutt, who she's obviously worked with before, yeah. and like Pharaoh's Khan, which is the right one to choose. And it's yes. uh, pretty bananas. And she gets to like judo chop people. And Helen's there in a champagne flute, a champagne glass. And like there's a right. villain lair and a weird monkey and like monkey doll and like all sorts of stuff. So I really. I, I salute whatever choices went into making that film. And uh, if I hadn't been Sadna, I would have wanted to make one too, I think. So good for her. <laughs> and I think the director of Intercom, R.K. Nair, isn't that the person she ended up marrying? Yes. I believe that, if, that was her husband of 30 years. Yes. Yes. That's quite right. Yeah. That's quite right. And her parents were opposed to the match because apparently she was very young when they met and when they yeah. decided to get married and all of that. But by all accounts, she was supposedly, was a very happy match. And, and he, he directed of, Love and Shimla, which is her, her debut, debut as a, as a grown up. And I, I uh, didn't put that together in time to actually try to find it and watch it, but I, I've seen Love in Tokyo. Yes, I have as well. <laughs> I, I can't remember which of the other Love in films I have seen, but it, that really? one sounds like it would be fun. I was sort of skimming through it on YouTube before we got on this call, and it looks it looks enjoyable to me. So I would. I think that. Love and Shimla is the one uh, during which um, she was told that she needed to cut her hair in a fringe because apparently so. she had like too big a forehead, or as we say, five head. Five head. Um, yeah. So that's as someone apparently... with a five head, I fully appreciate the. I do also. <laughs> um, I did get bangs um, in my twenties. In uh, in Mumbai, I, I just went to a hair salon and I was like, I'm gonna cut my hair and I got bangs. I later realized what a hideous idea that was because my hair is wavy. And so the effort, oh, the it's not effort, worth it. No, I would love to unless have bangs, you but have I can't. thin straight hair. You should not get bangs. This is a public service message to anybody who is listening. Do not get bangs unless you have the patience of a yet. saint. No, and the hair on my forehead it kept giving me acne. Because oh, yeah. I guess it would trap like yeah. face oil or whatever. So it was like the worst thing ever. And then out like growing out my bangs and then that awkward phase. It was like so bad. But for a brief moment in time, I was the proud owner of a bangs haircut. But in India, nobody calls it bangs. Nobody calls it fringe. Everybody calls it the sadhna cut. Like that it's is, literally 2023. I mean, that <laughs> is not nothing. So that, that <laughs> she... Because somehow that's passed down, right? And people have to, yeah. I'm sure there are people who say it who don't even know who she is, but I, I would suspect right. most people know who she is, even if just yeah. for that, or they piece it together when they remember an image they've seen. And then, you know, so that, that'd be interesting to hear from people about that. But that, I mean, it's kind of like saying the Farrah Fawcett haircut slash the Jennifer right. Aniston haircut, right? Like those right. are the those Rachel. Are the two I can think of the Rachel. Exactly. Those are the yeah. US ones I can think of that have a similar name attached to them. But like, that's very specific. And it, it speaks to how unusual it was, I guess. Yeah, I actually read a story about, so I've seen Mary Mahboob a really long time mm. ago, but I'm not a fan of Muslim socials, like that category of cinema, because they're very VP. I mean, they're too VP even for me. I was going to say, I you like to, to cry. <laughs> I do like to cry, but they're like a little too VP. Um, mm. However, I always appreciate the fashions. I'm very much in love with the gararas and the shararas that they show. Um, but Mary Mahboob, apparently, she showed up on set and having done something with her fringe, like she tied it up with pins or something and the director took one look at her and he was like why what what have you done to your hair and she was like well I'm playing a Muslim girl from like Lucknow I can't have uh, you know a French and he was like no we hired you in this movie for your charm and your prettiness you have to have those bags and she was like okay <laughs> and so she has like she has like her dupatta and everything and then she has the French <laughs> So why do you think Sadna became such a superstar? Like she seems, okay, so I don't have a theory. I'm just thinking out loud yeah. right now. 
I was watching Mira Saya, I had a smile on my face from the beginning Aww. of the film to the end of the film. And I have seen this movie many times. So even despite the fact that I have the memory of a goldfish, I know exactly what's happening because I've seen <laughs> it so many times. Here's the thing. Sunil Dutt is just one of those people, I cannot look at him and not say awe because he <laughs> just... He just makes me happy, um, even though he's crying in a majority of this film. And then Sadna also makes me very happy when I see her because she's so like pretty and charming and elfin. She's very elfin, but she's not quite a manic pixie dream girl, which I appreciate. She doesn't mm-hmm. cross that line into Mm-mm. being annoying. Um, but they're so well matched together. And the word I would use to describe them and also the movie itself and just the way that Mirasai is directed and the songs are depicted. It's, you know, shot extensively in Udaipur. Most mm. of the songs have Lake Palace in the background yeah. and the water. It's just so pretty. The word I would use to describe both of them is genteel. Huh. So they're they're very like, it's not even like they're upper crust or elite. It's that they're very like genteel and soft mannered and there, there's like a, there's a softness to sadhana and there's a softness to sunil that that i really appreciate like neither of these people have any hard edges and i think that's what makes you feel very sort of maybe mm-hmm. affectionate towards them and so i wonder if that is part of her charm it's like she's clearly very very beautiful but not in a threatening way she clearly was wore these very like skin tight but at the same time, it it was never particularly like uh, erotic, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, she did all these very fun like dances, like Jumka Girare and things like that, which, by the way, is still relevant. I mean, Rocky or Rani Ki Prem Kahani, which is coming out, has just sampled bits of Jumka Girare very badly, I might add. Um, but, you know, so she's done these very like fun boisterous dance numbers and Mm -hmm. yet she's not necessarily like a dancer per se but I think the overall vibe is just this very beautiful genteel noble person and also a little bit enigmatic where you kind of don't really know what she is beneath the surface and maybe that's why she does so well in these like weird movies where it's like who is she is she human is she spirit um but I kind of think of her as a as a woman Sunil does that's really interesting right? I mean, this is not necessarily a well-formed thought. I was just thinking. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I have seen quite a few of his films. I would have to think about that, but I, I, I definitely follow what you're saying and I can see how Mm. that would be true. Genteel and sort of non-threatening is a, is a thing that serves many people well in real life. So I can see how it could translate through performances as well. And because she does do these sort of a few of these mysterious films being able to be um, versatile and or a blank slate enough to fit into different things. So like in yeah. um, Anita, she she actually, because Manoj Kumar keeps looking for her and keeps thinking he sees her mm. and she's in different, you know, like she kind of takes some different forms as he thinks he's seen her and things like that. Mm. So she does kind of have multiple roles um, right. in the film and that's pretty interesting. And one of them is... Uh, um, uh yeah so playing like a a how do we how uh there's no politically correct way to say this because the subtitles call her a slut <laughs> oh god i know and i was like that is that i do not know hindi <gasps> for slut that doesn't come up very often and i wonder if that's actually what they said but <laughs> um oh, so good she's Lord. like very drunk at a bar and there's basically okay. only men at the bar and then she dances mm-hmm. with a, a particular character and is like draped all over him and he asks mm-hmm. what her name is and she says you decide or like you tell me or whatever like okay you know, uh, something we don't see heroines doing at that time, right. particularly often. So yeah, there is, I think there is something about, um, being non-threatening enough to slip in and out of different personas and maybe be believable in, in different things. And then also yeah. believable as someone that men characters assume things about, you know, that's right. also, that's also a, a thing to do. And it would be harder, for example, to, now, I'm not saying that someone like Zenet Aman never played a role like this. I don't, you know, she may have, I don't know, but it's harder to imagine someone like her, like Nitu. She's Singh, too confident. Like Reka, right? Like yeah, it's no, Reka, to absolutely not. 
yeah. men may try to project things on them, but they're going to bounce off a lot faster than, yeah. than with maybe someone like Sadna, but, and also I this is a different era, yeah. but you know. Right, right. No, with Sadna, there's that softness where it's kind of like you may, you know, she actually reminds me a little bit of Audrey Hepburn and not just because of the sure, French, sure. but if you look at a lot of Audrey's movies as well, whether it's Roman Holiday or Funny Face or, you know, Breakfast at Tiffany's or whatever, I absolutely adore Audrey Hepburn like for the Mm. longest time she was my favorite like western heroine Mm. but again it's like what exactly is Audrey Hepburn's unique selling proposition she was no Catherine Hepburn you know but that's also what makes her so appealing that she she never really comes on too strong and she's kind of like soft and like I want to be friends with her I don't Mm. know if I necessarily want to be friends with the Betty Davises Although I would love, I mean, I love watching Betty Davis on screen, but I don't know if I want to be friends with her. It's kind of like during the Suchitra Mm. Sen episode when you were Mm. saying how, you know, you love the characters she plays, but you're not sure what you would want to be friends with any of them because you feel like there's too much drama (laughs) involved. Yeah. I feel like with Sadhana, there's no drama. Yeah. Yeah. You would just like, there's um, a scene in Marisaya that I screenshotted. And I was like, honestly, this just looks so lovely and idyllic. Mm. They're sitting, in, she's sitting in the courtyard of their very grand house in Udaipur. And it's all this like white sandstone jolly work, beautiful architecture. There's bougainvilleas and there's this beautiful furniture. And she's sitting in the sun, in the sun in Rajasthan. And she is like knitting a sweater and she's wearing a purple chiffon sari. Her hair's in a bouffant. She's wearing kundan jewelry. She looks so beautiful and she's just like knitting. And I was like, ah, I want that life. (laughs) It was so aspirational and so lovely. And I was like, Mm. I would like to sit in the sun in Udaipur, just knitting a sweater in a purple chiffon sari, looking so glamorous. (laughs) I feel like this is my next vacation. Maybe minus the chiffon sari, but maybe I can knit in Udaipur at least. (laughs) (laughs) You can do this. (laughs) <laughs> please talk about Volcan T because that's, Ooh. I mean, I think that's also one of her big standout films, right? So yes. uh, dig into that one a little bit and like how it fits with some of the other spooky things we've seen. So maybe. it's interesting because I was l- reading her filmography and honestly, it's like that woman had an amazing few years in the mid sixties. So she had Volcan T come out, giant blockbuster, and she was the one headlining it. So she yep. gets the credit along with, of course, yep. Raj Khosla, the director, and Madan Mohan, the music director. Then she comes out with Vakht. Then comes Mira Saya, again, a gigantic blockbuster, Again, it's the same team, Raj Khosla, Mother Music for the Music. Mm. And then there comes Anita, and that is also Raj Khosla, and that was also a super hit. So she had four gigantic blockbusters in a row. Mm. And of those four, she deserves a tremendous amount of the credit for at least three. Um, I'm not so much giving her credit for what. And it's just kind of like, it's kind of astounding. I mean, that's like a dream run at the mm-hmm. box office. And... Um, but Wokanti is very interestingly done. It starts with like Manoj Kumar, who's a doctor, Dr. Anand. He's just driving his car and it's raining. It rains a lot in Wokanti, yes, by the way, which yes, was nice. <laughs> I appreciated that because we have a heat wave right now in California. So I was like, oh, that looks so nice. So he's like driving in the rain. And of course, there's this lady in a white sari, said lady in the white sari, which is for shorthand for ghosts, is Satna. And then she's very like ethereal and spooky and weird. And then she gets in his car and he says something about, she gets in the car and his wiper stop working. And he's like, that's weird. How am I going to see? And she's like, oh, I can see straight ahead. And he's like, okay, like you're a weird woman. Um, then after a point, like he, um, because he's a doctor, he's been summoned to like this very abandoned looking Habeli. Mm. where supposedly there's a patient who's at death's door and desperately needs him. And he goes over there and the person in the, in, on their deathbed is Sadna, <gasps> whom in the first scene we had seen in his car. So he's now he's very confused. He's like, what the heck is this woman? Then, so he's been dating Helen, which um, you are very lucky, Mr. Manoj Kumar. And his mother has no objection to him marrying Helen, which of course she should be happy that Helen's going to be her bahu. Um, but Helen has like one good dance number with him, like a romantic number, Uh, no, two romantic numbers. And then she collapses in the elevator because someone has injected her with cyanide. I know. And I was like, what the heck? Yes. And so someone has 
I know. So someone killed her. And clearly you're like, why have they killed her? This is terrible. This is a plot. It's because he's going to become like super wealthy because some like long lost relative is his benefactor. Like he's inheriting all this money, which these things never happen to us, Beth. I don't know why. <laughs> I just want someone to like call me up and be like, hey, you have a long lost auntie and she's dead and you now have inherited millions. But like that never happens. <laughs> um, <laughs> so he's now suddenly very wealthy. And um, he's been very sad about Helen's death. Mm -hmm. And eventually his mom is like, and his uh, boss at the hospital, um, who we later discover is a bad guy. Um, they're like, you know, you can't just mope for Helen forever. And like, you should get married. And he's like, fine. And Watch he me. Gets, <laughs> yeah. And so he gets married to a lady of his mom's choosing. And this is so unbelievable, given that this is the 60s and he is a doctor. But he never sees her face because she's in a gungad the entire time. I know. So it's like, okay. So then on their wedding night, he's going to actually like lift her gungat and it's raining and it's a dark and stormy, right? And he actually says very unironically, he says, it's always raining. I'm like, yeah, because this is Wokanthi. It's always raining in this movie. And then he turns around and he lifts her gungat and ah, it's Sadna. And he's like, what the heck? I saw you as a ghost on the road. I saw you on your deathbed in Haveli and now you're my wife? What in heaven's name? And so there's a lot of like weird goings on where it's like he takes her to the Haveli but then she disappears but then when he comes home and he's distraught he's like where's my wife she's actually there with his mom so it's like he is convinced that there's something wrong with her and she's a ghost and she's not a real human being and he's being very bitchy towards her um, and she has no idea why he's being so mean to her and everything and I mean eventually the plot doesn't make a lot of sense towards the end. It's kind of like hurried along and shoehorned, but it's basically uh, Prem Chopra, uh, who is his cousin. Of course, anytime you see Prem Chopra, you know there's some scheming happening. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically, she is sort of like a doppelganger, the other person that, you know, it's like meant to like gaslight him and scare him and stuff like that. But like the real sadhana that he's married to is, like the good person but it's just like a movie that keeps playing with you and Manoj Kumar to his credit has done a decent job and Satna plays the very weird ghost who talks in riddles really excellently but she plays the the sad wife really well as well mm. with a bare minimum of um there's not too much like crying in Rona Dhuna <laughs> thankfully because you know this is not Nina Kumari that we're talking about she's melancholic and she's sad and she doesn't understand why her handsome doctor husband is being so mean to her which I don't blame her um but she's just very bewildered and she like in the movie she has all these beautiful songs that Lata Mangeshkar has sung that are mm -hmm. picturized on her Lagja Gale and um you know it's just beautiful beautiful numbers Madan Mohan man that music director was such a genius mm -hmm. and um you know, it's just, it's a fun movie. It did keep me guessing. Towards the end, I did feel like the ending was um, a little bit taut, but it's very well shot. And Wokanthi, apparently, uh, Gurudath wanted to actually make this movie, but mm -hmm. Gurudath shelved so many films in his lifetime, and this is one of the scripts that he shelved. Viraj Khosla used to be his assistant director. Mm -hmm. um, and it was apparently, Gurudath was going to title it Raz, and it was going to start Wahida Rahman. Oh, that'd be um, good too. Yeah. Yes, but then he shoved it, and the Rajkoslav was like, "Fine, I'll make the script." And he made it Wokanti, and he starred. Um, he put Sadhna in it, um, and Manoj Kumar in it, and it's like it's a fun sort of like a thriller movie. It's well shot. I think the fact that it's black and white makes it more creepy. A la Kohra, you know. Mm -hmm, I think it's mm -hmm. prettier for that reason. But between Wokanti and Merasaya, I think Merasaya is leagues ahead mm. of that film. Definitely one of my favorites. A large reason for that being Sunil Dutt, Sadna's beautiful costumes, the music, and mm. Udaipur. Mm. Like, Mira Saya is a very aesthetically pleasing movie. Mm. Um, it's just pretty, pretty, pretty. Just all the pastels. I mean, I know we've waxed lyrical about Rajasthan in the past, and this is, again, shot at Rajasthan and Udaipur. Very beautiful. Mm. But I would say Wokanthi is worth a watch. It's a fun movie. And um, even if you're a Manoj Kumar hater like Beth and I are, uh, he's actually not too bad in this. <laughs> and it, it, it is, um, I mean, I feel like of the the sort of 
any discussion of Hindi horror slash mm. mystery slash spooky always includes it. It I feel those discussions yes. do not as nearly as often include Marisaya or Anita. No. So it it even if we maybe don't think it's the best of the three Rajkosla sadna films it's the most important i think at least it's the most and most famous time. one for sure i yeah. think mira saya actually gets categorized more as a romance okay like it i would categorize mira saya more as a romance because the the love that sunil that's character and sadna has for each other is mm. so paramount in this okay. film whereas in wokanti manoj kumar basically has no love for this woman because he's convinced that there's something wrong with her ie he thinks she's a ghost or right. like someone possessed so he does not want anything to do with her they literally do not have any romantic numbers except for lagjagale where she is basically trying to like be like i'm your wife why are you so mean to me mm -hmm. but even that is one sided mira saya has some beautiful like super romantic numbers romantic scenes between her and sunil that like sunil that loves his wife in that film so to me even though the stories are sort of similar and then kohra is also a little bit similar to wakanti the mm -hmm. biggest difference between wakanti and kohra on the one hand and mira saya on the other is that mira saya has a very strong romance mm. element in it it is a love story at its core it just happens to be a love story with like a thriller aspect to to it um but it is a romance mm. i'm wondering if he he sort of tried to bridge those two or combine those two in anita then because it mm. does start with them as a romantic couple okay and then and her father objects and then she's dead. Um, <laughs> that sounds so dire. Yeah. <laughs> like I mean, there's a romance that the father, the parents of Jack, and then she's dead. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of trying to put those two together. And there's a lot of love lorn mm -hmm. from Manoj Kumar. And he has a song oh. that was actually a lot more effective than you would guess. Okay. <laughs> this film is in color, but it's shot in... Um, Oh, I'm so sorry. It's shot somewhere way up in the mountains and it's really pretty. Okay. Um, and there's a scene of him at a at a temple, just kind of sitting outside the temple and looking across the mountains and singing about, you know, oh. his sad heart and everything. And it's it's pretty good. And it's um Mukesh who sings for him. And I, I liked oh. that pairing. I like Mukesh actually quite a bit. Um yeah. especially once I'm like, okay, it's not Raj Kapoor, you can picture him with someone else. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, yeah, that kind of sounds like maybe it was trying to put those two together. Yeah. Um, and I I would say that Anita is maybe not, it's good. Like, I, I think you can get by in life without having seen it, but she does have, she has a couple of fun songs in it. And I was thinking when you were talking about her not being the strongest dancer, yeah. there's a song where she's in the sort of, um, I don't know what the right word for this is, but the subtitles often say gypsy. Um, <laughs> yeah. People, you know. Yeah, like a banjara or something. Yeah. 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 Um, she's, it's a costume party and she, mm. I guess, is dressed as that, but then she's dancing with a bunch of people outside and like her dad and her, her boyfriend are all like, what is she doing? She's being scandalous or whatever. And when you yeah. see her, you're like, I don't know if Sadna can pull off this kind of song. Like that is an Asha Parekh number. Mm for sure a himamalani number right like there's certain women who do these we love to say i love that kind of number yeah um but i didn't think she could do it but what they interestingly did was gave her choreography that i very much associate with heroes which is stand hmm. almost still but like do a lot of stuff from kind of arms and head okay right so she's like peeking around things and like okay. gesturing at people and like teasing people and whatever. So it's not as much footwork, but it is in motion. Right. And it's interesting. I'd never, there must be other women who get choreography like that too. And I'm just not thinking of it, but I was like, how are they going to make this work? Oh, that's how they made it work. And I thought it was quite effective. Like I'm no dance scholar, but I thought they made that function really well. And I would recommend that song. I'll try to remember to put a link in it. I don't, the lyrics to it were very confusing to me in the subtitle. Cause it keeps talking about, there's an old man who's coughing. And I was like, what is, this? <laughs> what? is there an, a, a metaphor I'm not getting here or something, but like, I, anyway, but it's I will cute. have to see it's this song. song. And then her <laughs> drunk song in that, which is not maybe quite as famous as the, or it's not as major as the intercom one, but she does have a drunk song where she's wearing this really great, like 
shift dress with like a sequin down it. And that's, oh. that's on the poster, although the, in the film it's red on the poster, I think it's yellow, but she looks okay. great. Like it's super stylish and she's a good drunk actor, I would say. And she's right. kind of like flopping around and everything. And it's, it's good. When you were talking about like the the steps that are usually given to male actors, it actually made me think of one of her most famous songs um, from Mira Saya, which is Neno Valine Hai mm-hmm. Mera Dil Luta, which is shot in those like palaces or whatever. Mm-hmm. And she's wearing this like bubblegum pink satin um, mm-hmm. churidar kurta, super, super tight mm-hmm. with like the material girl boob inserts or whatever, like very, very <laughs> pointy. And uh, she's so cute in that. And she is actually impersonating. So what she's saying is um, she's talking like a man, like she's saying that the doe eyed beauty stole my heart. So she's ah. impersonating Sunil Dad. And it's funny, she takes her dupatta and she ties it around her head like a turban. And she's basically doing a lot of like manly kind of like, she's kind of poking fun at him. That's and he's cool. just walking around with like a little camera and he's just taking like pictures of hers and everything. The song is in flashback because he's remembering her. And mm. um, so she's doing all these like, you know, manly kind of things and being funny and comic and I think possibly that was like a smart move where they were like okay if we give her these like very typical heroine complex dance steps is going to be a flop so let's take advantage of her natural like mischievousness and impishness and take it back because she's great with expressions so yeah I'm flipping through the song on mute while you're talking and like yeah it looks really fun yeah, it's a lot. You should at least see like the songs yeah, of Mirza. Actually, you should see the movie even without subtitles because Sunil Dad is so adorable in it. Yeah, um, it looks good. Yeah, but maybe that's that's the that's the thing. But you're right. No one does the Banjara dances like Asha Parekh. Like mm-hmm. no one. She's so also Aruna Irani, of course. Oh, of course. How can I forget? Yeah. Oh my god, I love her so much. Oh my god. Aruna Irani oh and god. Asha Parekh in Karma is like chef's kiss. Even mm. Jitendra is chef's kiss, and I'm no Jitendra fan. But that no. entire movie is just. Fun. so fun it's so hysterical and it makes me want to run away and join like a caravan of people I know I know <laughs> and, and like, just I do would shenanigans be, I would be useless in all regards but I want to <laughs> tag along I could just be in the audience like clapping or playing a drum or something yeah I can do that. I'd have like the tambourine or whatever like, in the I corner can play the tambourine. I can do that <laughs> nice so any concluding thoughts on Sadna? This is not a concluding thought, but I did just want to put out a quick call for uh, one of the films I also really like her in is with, no surprise, Shashi Kapoor, Prem Patra, which is a cute college love story. And he plays a, he plays a, either a medical student or a scientist or something like that. So it's like him with a bunch of lab equipment (laughs) and they, they have love letters and it's really quite cute as I recall. So I know that you are opposed to the Kapoor men being portrayed as men of science, but did you believe Shashi Kapoor is a scientist? (laughs) I, if memory serves, he is he is quite young in the film and he's supposed to be. And I think that helps. So he's okay. not like a big major medical authority figure or anything like that. Okay. So I think I think that's probably the way to go. So he's not um, like a Shami Kapoor surgeon person. No, mm. no. So I watched um I watched Jackie Shroff's debut hero the hero. other day. And I was like, oh, here's Shami again. Like, what's he doing now? But he's a police, you know, a retired police officer in that one or whatever. So I was like, okay, that's more, <laughs> more believable. I still don't love it. Like he should be a, a... you know, I recently saw Prince with him with the oh, yeah, and I, really, I was like, this is the best role I've ever seen Shami Kapoor do. Like it's totally <laughs> believable, but there's also some substance to it. And I really, I really like that. So him is like debauched aristocrat who then maybe tries to do a little bit better I'm like that's what I need him to do that is totally his wheelhouse though like that is the Shami Kapoor brand where he's like a brat and he has oodles of money yeah and he's just throwing his money around and he's just enjoying himself yes no 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 degree no education required (laughs) I love Deepaj um, Shami Kapoor, like Casanova Shami Kapoor, but I really do have a soft spot for my surgeon Shami Kapoor. Maybe there's more know. than that one film. I hope there is. There are. There are oh, okay. at least two or three films of his that I've seen, like where he was like older and yeah. he had like his gray and white beard and he would always wear suspenders with his big giant pot belly and he would be like the surgeon. And every time he says all these medical things and he holds the scalpel, I'm like, yeah, you're the one I want to like take medical advice from and go like, you need to be my primary care physician. He's awesome. <laughs> 
I also feel I strongly like- that you should not let the Kapoors drive because <laughs> they're always like hanging out, you know, they're doing big songs while they're driving. You're like, no, man, you can't do that behind the wheel. <laughs> we should come up with a list of all the activities Kapoor men are not allowed to do. <laughs> yeah. It's a pretty long list. It's a pretty long list. Like just be rich and don't really do anything. But Shashi is a chauffeur in at least two or three movies I've seen. And he he seems to be driving pretty okay yeah. as a chauffeur. So as, not as too usual, bad. Shashi is the most responsible. <laughs> That's not saying a whole lot, probably, but it's something. Like it's relative. All these relative. things are relative. Yeah. So it's fine. <laughs> You know, it always surprises me how Ranbir Kapoor is so boring in comparison to the older Kapoors. It's a like, boring era, right? Yeah, it is a boring era. Like, in I ways. simply, for the life of me, cannot imagine him in a bathrobe dangling from a helicopter. I just can't. Well, so this is what I'm going to put out. This has nothing to do with Sadhana, but I want to put on a call. <laughs> this is or, just us digressing. Um, what was that movie he did last summer before Brahmastra Shamshara, right? Oh, yeah. I've not seen it. There's a He's great a song. Ji Huzur in Shamshara okay. is like full shami, shashi, goofy, like playing with the kids in the town, like all sorts of antics happening. If you haven't seen Ji Huzur from Shamshara, please do, because that's, okay. you know... And he's a thief in that movie. So, you know, he's he's kind of impish and whatever. I he thought he's a decoy. Well, he becomes... You'll see. Oh, you'll oh. see. But in the, it, okay. in the part of it, he is a... He's a thief. Um, and so that that is a very old school Kapoor song to me. And I was huh. so glad to see it because I was like, yes, these are the bones of your family. And I'm so glad you're or the DNA of your family. Like I'm getting to see. And I don't think he gets and or takes the chance to do a ton of that. Um, no, Nito actually has also done a lot of that stuff. Yes. Like Nito has done so many. I've lost track of the amount of roles where she's like a chorni, like she's a yeah. thief or a yeah. pickpocket or something. Yeah. And she was, she did a lot of those sort of like impish uh-huh. roles. Again, not known for like particularly serious acting, but right. she was your girl if you wanted her to play some girl next door person who gets into scripts. Yeah. Um, and surprisingly, Ranbir doesn't do that at all. I mean, it goes kind of against the the type that he is. Yes. The type that we associate him with, even though he does do more than that, but like that, yeah. you know, the sort of young man trying to find himself is not usually yeah. a thief. But maybe the I I mean the 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 first parts of Brahmastra where he's a DJ or whatever, like who cares? Right. Like Something. that's not why we're watching that movie. But that I feel like that character maybe has a little bit of that because he's like a little bit those kids and everything. But yeah, yeah, the roles he's chosen. A little bit really of a Mr. India ish vibe, blend. like with the kids. I mean, yeah, yeah. he doesn't hmm, do things that lend themselves to that much. But if he did, I think he would be able to do it. He's got the he's got it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so again, Sadhna is, of course, related to the Kapoors, as I'm sure your mm-hmm. gigantic Kapoor family oh, yes. will tell you. She was first cousins with Babita, mm-hmm. but I don't think they were ever particularly close. And her best friends in the film industry, again, were um, uh, Asha Parekh, Nanda, and Helen. Mm-hmm. It seems like Helen, Nanda, were, Helen, Nanda, and Asha Parekh are friends with everybody. It's and so then great. Bahida is also friends with everybody. And then there's mm-hmm. that yesteryear's actress, Shami. She was also yeah. friends with them. So it's yeah. like, I want to figure out, like, I mean, you can't break into that friend circle anymore because many of those people are, like, gone. But, like, that friend circle must have been so much fun, dude. Can you imagine? Like, that girl gang is the one to aspire to. So. It's like there's that picture from a couple of years ago of like with Rekha, with Rani Mukherjee and a couple of other people. And you're like, I yeah. want in on that. <laughs> I want in on anything Rekha related. True. True. Okay. Any parting thoughts before we close up this Sadhna episode? I do hope listeners will share their favorite Sadhna films with us, especially if it's not one that we have mentioned, because she does have a, I mean, her filmography is quite strong. There's a lot of good movies in here. And then there's some movies where, you know, maybe the movie isn't great, but she's certainly perfectly good in it. Um, and also tell us if we're wrong about any of her dancing. If you've got a good Sadna dancing film uh, or song, we'd love to see it. And if you've got any more Sadna drunk songs, because I've seen at least two and they were very good. I think <laughs> she's very good at that. So 
tell us I want to know um I want to know in the comments if you guys know what the sadhana factor was because yeah. um Beth and I were theorizing and I'm I'm still not 100% sure that we figured it out so if you really like sadhana or you know what her jam was what made her so popular let us know because we certainly <laughs> like her we just don't we just don't understand the extent of her I should have asked on Twitter because, and I know, I think this person's on Instagram too, but there's like a Sadna fan club on Twitter. Um, Mm -hmm. So we should have asked those people and I I will tag them in this and hopefully they can point us towards some, some, and I meant to go looking in the academic resources about this and I just ran out of time, but um, I'm sure there's something, there's clearly something there and it's speaking to us, even if we cannot identify it because we enjoy her. Like, am I going to yeah. be a mega fan? Maybe not, but I'm definitely a fan and I'm always yeah. happy to see her in something like her name on a, on a film makes yeah. me like, yo, oh, yeah, I'd watch that, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that's also kind of like one of the things about the superstar series, right? Like there were some people that from the get go, we were so excited. Like we couldn't yeah. wait to get to them. Like Ray Khan, we were like chomping <laughs> in the bed to get to her. But then there were those, and then there were those people where we were like, no, like that was a unanimous decision. No Hema Malini, no Meena Kumari. <laughs> but then there were some people where we were kind of on the fence where we were like, yes, no. And then Sadna <laughs> was one of those, but I'm glad yeah. we, we, mm-hmm tried and watched a bunch of her films and had a discussion about it because I feel like I did get more of an appreciation of Same. her. Um, okay. Well, that concludes this episode of Filmy Ladies. Thank you for watching. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and tell us in the comments what you thought. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, let us know. We're very, um, always looking for ideas. So thank you for watching. Bye. Also, if you've ever cut your hair into bangs and regretted it, that's also fair game in the comments because I think don't do it. Don't do it.